Ah, Geek Out! Hey, welcome to another installment of From Geek Out with Love. I'm Sam. I'm Jake. I'm Rich. I'm Garrett. This time we're going to be talking about 1997's Tomorrow Never Dies. Um, Pierce Brosnan's sophomore outing as as James Bond on Her Majesty's Secret Service, directed by Roger. I'm just going to front this right now. I feel like I feel like we need to be clear that like in a lot of episodes we say we're going to be talking about this movie and then we wind up not talking about it. I just want to front that that's going to happen here again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, good chance, good chance. Yeah, it only took how many episodes to realize that? No, 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 this will be the one, guys. This... Diamonds are forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are totally not going to bring up Dick Tracy or fucking... I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm excited to see what we're going to bring up randomly that has nothing to do with James Bond. That's Richard exciting. Sharp, contact lens commercials with Sean Bean. Um, I, mean, that's, I feel like that's, aside from GoldenEye, that's going to be, you know, the Pierce Brosnan thing is, you know, when you're listening to these podcasts you know just come in and recognize that you're going to get maybe a solid two minutes of talk about the movie <laughs> is it now in the case of tomorrow never dies would you argue are you of the belief that tomorrow never dies is not a particularly memorable bond film or just film in general it's it, it is the the nicest thing i can say about it is that it's not particularly memorable because <laughs> like golden eye is memorable because it's good pretty much everything else brosnan was in is memorable because like i I feel like I would have been better served like spending the entire spending the entire runtime like slamming my thumb in a drawer or something. You know, that just would have been a more enjoyable. Just your thumb. But this is just maybe my, maybe some maybe my dick too. I don't know. But <laughs> there um, it is. I, that that one's really reserved for the Incredible Hulk. But, oh yeah, um, the Eric Bond. Bang- no, the the yeah the, yeah Bang- Eric. Hulk. Yeah. Good God, that was awful. But no, like this this film is, it's a film. You can watch it. <laughs> we all own it, except for. Jake, you don't own. No, t- I own it. Oh. I own the whole Blu-ray collection. Mm. Rich, Rich, do you own? Do you own Tomorrow Never Dies? On VHS, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Look out, world! Uh, I will say this is the first Bond movie I saw in theaters. Me too. Me too. So it has that special place in my heart. Um, that being said, Sam and I rewatched it recently, and aside from a couple set pieces, it's just. And even the set pieces are kind of anemic, right? There's nothing. I don't know if it's. When you think gold, pieces. yeah, you can watch them. Yes, when you when you think Goldeneye, you're like, oh, the the entire prologue, oh, the entire Peter's Saint Petersburg sequence, oh, the finale on the on the satellite cradle, those are all like standout sequences for any Bond movie. Yeah. What's the big one here? The motorcycle chase through the streets of like nondescript Southeast Asian city. No. The only thing I ever think of is just like, and it's not even like a scene; it's just like a still shot of the the boat oh the weird stealth ship yeah yeah it's like a upside down taco Mm. yeah that's that's good taco bell like like when i go back and think about the movie it's not even moving it's just like like 10 year old or however the fuck old i was garrett was like that's a really cool looking boat i'm gonna take a snapshot of that in my brain (laughs) i think you know Topically speaking, it's perhaps the most topical, timely Bond film than the idea of the media generating its own bad news for its own nefarious ends. But I think Jonathan... The villain is Roger Ailes. Yes. And, you know, again, super timely timely and topical. I just don't think Jonathan Price has the chops for it here. He definitely chews the scenery. I mean, like... Typing away like a madman. Yeah, nobody types uh, like that. Yeah. Nobody types like that. <laughs> He's like, la, 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 you know, just like yeah. as fast as possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is me typing. Yeah. That's basically what he's doing when he types. It's like a headline's like a couple of words and he's writing like paragraphs. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's like that op- episode of The Office where Michael Scott has like the headline that he comes <laughs> up with. That's the in- basically the entire article. Yeah. Um, this movie is kind of good. There's a couple set pieces that are okay. Also, why the, is the uh, death of James Bond? And you can make this argument for... For you only live twice as well. Why is the death of James Bond, who, as far the world as far as the world knows, is a naval commander, front page news? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Rich, where do you stand on on Tomorrow Never Dies? I think it's an underrated film from a standpoint of the way people remember it. Like, I don't think it's as bad as putting a thumb in a drawer <laughs> or dick. You're doing it over and over, like yeah, you know, unless you like that kind of thing. More to Garrett's point, it's a it's a movie. You can watch it. 
I in rewatching it, you know, there's a lot that I had forgot. Uh, Same. And it certainly, um, it's it, it's a really good background bump. We've said that mm. before about like Roger Moore. You can kind of have him on in the background, and you know it, it's fun to have on. This is what I would say is like a very good background Vaughn, whereas like you know Die Another Day is unwatchable. Yeah, that's my least and, favorite. Uh, yeah. The world is not enough is basically unwatchable after the first, um, the first opening sequence. But yeah, I mean I think that um, you know the production was rushed on this. Yeah. And, if, if, if I remember correctly, and I think that's probably part of the reason why, um, you know, there's nothing really all that memorable about the uh, about the movie. Um, from being a topical standpoint, you could do this in modern day, certainly in our current political and global and social climate. And if you cast it right and had, you know, just any memorable things in there like just some of the set pieces from Spectre with this being the type of villain I mean you'd have every film buff in Hollywood uh, would be coming to this movie um, po- on the positive front speaking of coming on the positive front there we go uh, Jeremy Irons is, is the modern day uh, Rupert Murdoch Roger Ailes character yeah um, I love the theme song it's Choco. a great theme song Oh, yeah, it's, it's freaking awesome. It's, it's like it's got the Nancy Sinatra vibe from uh, You Only Live Twice. It's poten- potentially the best Pierce Brosnan. Theme. I would say not even potentially. It's far and away the best Pierce Brosnan theme because I don't. Rem- I I remember Die Another Day for all the wrong reasons. Analyze this. <laughs> analyze this. I'll analyze this. It sucks. Um, and I don't remember World's Not Enough. Well, you will. <laughs> don't sleep on the World's Not Enough garbage. Shirley Manson. So good, no. Um, no, I love the, I love the, uh, I love the Bond theme here. Um, hot take, hot take. Uh, first off, I kind of agree with Rich. I don't think it's as bad. I don't think it's, it's as not, bad as it's everybody. Not the worst. Ma- no, it isn't as bad as everybody makes it out to be. It's not. It's never as good as I want it to be. It's a chapter select movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will. I will say real quick because it just entered my brain. The BMW scene in the in the parking garage is maybe my favorite part. Like, Pierce Brosnan is having, like, a lot of fun. It's absurd. He destroys some family's establishment by driving a BMW through the front of it. Yeah, it's like uh, a travel agency. Is, it, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, and that that's, like, we always, like, since, I, maybe even since we started this, there's always that montage of, like, Bond moments that, like, every movie has that moment. This moment is him laughing and flipping the, or no, laughing after, like, after, in like, the back seat. yeah, in the back seat. Um, that and then of course the uh, the big sky uh, going down the ripping the uh, giant poster. Oh off yeah, the, oh, the sky yeah. building. Yeah. I remember seeing like behind the scenes and that movie was coming out, and I remember being like, "Oh man, I, this is like the Bond movie I get to see in theaters." Yeah. Um, I was so psyched. I remember liking it. Yeah, yeah. I will. Here, uh, here's the more controversial opinion I have. Okay. Um, the hotter take. It's my favorite performance of Pierce Brosnan's as James Bond. Why? He has fully grown into the role. Mm-hmm. Um, they always try to, like, I guess they try to saddle him with the, the love interest with Terry Hatcher. Like, like this one matters. Mm. They never actually, like. No. But um, it's something they lean a little too heavily in and the world is not enough, I think. By the way, real quick, Terry Hatcher dressed yeah. up as Lois Lane and at interviewed Cindy. people at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. That's, um, like, the best thing. Yeah, I didn't see that. I wish I came across that. Anyway, <laughs> um... No, what was it we kept saying during the movie? Like he's like the Punisher. He kills a fuck ton of people. He kills a lot of people in this movie. Yeah, he's pretty cold blooded. Um, and he's always like pretty like almost oh, non- nonchalant about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Like he'll like just like casually like work a submachine gun and then just kind of like toss it aside when he's done with it. He kills that one assassin. Whatever. I'm only doing my job or whatever. And <laughs> yeah. he's like, so am I. And, like, <laughs> just kills him. He's like yeah. <laughs> like he has like that weird like yeah like like that weird stance he has like yeah. the Pierce Brosnan stance where he breathes through his nose because that's all he does. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot you to the fucking head, man. <laughs> that ruined Pierce, Br- and I suppose I'm ruining it for everybody now too. When I realized Pierce Brosnan just breathes heavily through his nose in literally every movie, yeah, he's- I mean, it didn't ruin it for me. Like I, I definitely noticed it a couple times, but it, it hasn't like stuck with me. So it didn't ruin it. Okay. Um. Okay. Maybe I just haven't seen the movie yet. 
Yeah. I mean, which which movie was it that was like this is the movie? It gets progressive. It gets. It, does. I th- it was probably Die Another Day because by Die Another Day, I'm just like, you know, looking for shit. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, looking for every nod they had to the Bond movie. They had they have a reference to every Bond movie before it. That was the goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if anything got left out. Uh, I'll actually do my research on that one. But the, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah, the, like Rich was saying, this was a rush production. They uh, wanted to recapture the. They six- didn't even have a script when they started filming. Yeah, they had the se- they had the set pieces, and um, they basically linked it all together. They were like, "Okay, come up with a story to make this all work." And that's why, if if the film feels a little slapdash, I will say it. In a lot of ways, it's kind of paced better because of it, though. It's paced better than Goldeneye. Goldeneye kind of has that moment where, like, after after the. Uh, prologue or after the uh, uh, Monte Carlo sequence, Gold and I kind of tapers off a bit. Mm. This doesn't, re- that never really happens here. It's because to taper off, you have to be on. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like, I really feel like this is a film that like they should play in workplaces. Like, because it's the perfect background bond. Like, you'll be going and then there's like maybe 30 seconds of something you want to, like, you actually want to watch and then it just goes back to like things happening and you could watch it if you want to but why would you because you've got work to get done like yeah i don't know like it's like oh like the the fucking poster that he rides down and like okay now i can go back to doing what i was doing yeah <laughs> remember when he and waylin accidentally crashed their motorcycle into a couple having sex and then they just kind of keep having sex remember when mm. um they open As up one does <laughs> remember when they open up like the wall or whatever and it's just like shitload of weapons yeah that are just like every weapon ever is there yeah and he picks the p99 or p90 yeah i like them tiny yeah (laughs) i like snub-nosed revolvers um yep not even a revolver but yeah no um (coughs) what do you okay what do you speaking of waylan what do you think of terry hatcher and and michelle yo michelle yo kicks a lot of ass i mean like she she uh Definitely brings it. Um, I don't know why she has to like go hya every time she shoots a gun. Yeah, you know, gun foo. Yeah, <laughs> thing. yeah. yeah. Uh, Next time on the Equilibrium podcast. Yeah. Exactly. Ooh, shit. Speaking Sean, of Sean, Sean Bean. Bean. Yep. Yeah. That's a good movie. That is a good movie. <laughs> um, I actually thought this, these were the weakest Bond women of Brosnan's run. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I, I could, I could go that far. For as bad of a movie as The World Is Not Enough was, M gets a little bit more time to shine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Sophie uh, Marceau uh, I love actually Sophie did Marceau. a pretty good job. Yeah, no, she's great. Um, and, yeah. you know, Halle Berry's actually got charisma. <laughs> yeah, Halle Berry's in that movie, and she's fine, but I actually liked um, Miranda Frost in Die Another Day. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Terry Hatcher is like, uh, you know, Whatever, um, I like Terry Hatcher. Actually, just I just rewatched the episode of Frasier she was on. Um, she's good in that episode. She uses Frasier um as like free therapy because they're dating, and then he realizes it and he's like, "Fuck." Um, it's a good one, but uh, yeah, no, I mean they're they're fine. Um, I don't know. I just I just feel like this one's like the fine one. <laughs> um. They're actresses. You can watch them. Yeah, but I mean, like, just overall, like I said, like they're you know, real spectacular. There's just some, there's some big time, like, cool moments in it. Um, but just, I don't know, it's not, you know, not iconic as as Goldeneye, and and um, but I think it's a fine follow up. You know, I don't think it uh, it really started to get weird. I don't know. I even I wouldn't even say like it's like it's really shite until uh, you know till die another day. But um, again, I haven't watched World's Not Enough. I, I was telling Sam like the the Brosnan era is the one I haven't watched rewatched you know in a long time. Like I don't even remember the last time I saw Tomorrow Never Dies before rewatched it. I don't remember the last time I've seen World's Not Enough. Um, it's been a long, 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 long time. So yeah, I mean it's just uh, you know there's a lot of times I was going like you were saying, Rich. Like I was watching, going, oh I forgot about that. You know, um, but yeah, fine, fine, fine film. Probably my favorite James Bond movie. I don't know. Rock three times this weekend. What's that? 
I watched the movie The Rock three. Oh, The Rock. Yeah. Times this weekend. How in Zeus's butthole? Um, <laughs> you know, no, I'm, I said it simply because you were talking about how we might get into other movies, and before my wife went out to go uh, run whatever, and she's running at ten o'clock at night. Um, she's like, "Are you going to talk about Sean Connery and The Rock? Because you watched that fucking thing three times this weekend." <laughs> You know that was a movie I had. You should uh, you should put it on so that when she comes back, it's just playing. Yeah. <laughs> just put it on every fucking TV in the house. Every time she <laughs> enters a room, go welcome to the Rock. Yeah. Just Remember? just start texting her clips from the movie while she's out. Yeah. Do the do the Nick Cage pose at the end. Ah! When he's got like the fucking uh, flares. flares. Remember uh, yeah. when like Sean Connery. Green smoke. Green smoke. Green smoke. <laughs> he uh, remember when Sean Connery basically teleports. Like at the end of the movie, like mm-hmm. he's like standing next to Nicolas Cage, and then suddenly, like as part he's of his, the way. yeah, he has that power. He, he does. <laughs> he does. I think he does the same thing in Entrapment to, to like Catherine Zeta Jones. Oh, I saw that movie once. But he's like supposed to be some kind of like super thief or something. Well, he's a super thief in both, isn't he? That's he's right. like a su- he, yeah, he's a spot. He's he's a, the same fucking character. He's an older James Bond in uh, The Rock. Yeah, basically. Yeah, what if James Bond was apprehended and, like, imprisoned on Alcatraz for years? Because that's what we do with spies. We put them in a fucking tourist attraction. We do. (laughs) I mean, any of you guys... Yeah. (laughs) Have any of you guys ever been to Alcatraz, like, seen it, like, as a good... Never been to San Fran. It's It's falling apart. Oh, you have been? Yeah, I was there in 2011. That's cool. (laughs) <laughs> i remember um i remember Jake's when it's all good for you yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so good that's so fine just like this film yeah <laughs> like i said yeah. my favorite james bond film yeah it's a national park you can go there yeah but <laughs> the uh, <laughs> um the video game for this sucked yeah i don't remember it very much was there a video game for this it was it was a ps1 exclusive no oh, that's why i didn't oh, play it that explains why i didn't play it yeah I'm going to look so, it up right now. So it was basically like so much hype after fucking Goldeneye, but they put out this subpar third-person shooter that's like a not-as-good siphon filter. Um, that's, yeah, it was it was a fucking travesty. Because you're coming off one of the greatest movies. Didn't even movies. know it existed until now? Nobody did, apparently. <laughs> but it, probably because it, it wasn't that good. It came out two years after the movie. Um, and it's. I know there was a there was a world is not enough video game, and I was all excited for it because it came out in the sixty four and had like the bright blue fucking cartridge. Like, cartridge. Yeah. And then it was garbage. It wasn't. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was better than Tomorrow Never Dies. It was, it's like. I mean. It was better than 007 Legends. Which one was that? Jake, didn't you play 007 Legends? That game is ridiculous. Um, it's like famous. You play famous moments from like the mo- different movies, but you're Daniel oh. Craig in all of them. You know, um, what was actually a lot of fun. The um, the um, from Russia with Love game yeah. that they came out for the, the Xbox because you could play as Goldfinger. Yeah. Also, in the multiplayer. So you're doing like deathmatch as just like this like completely. It's got like the Gears of War style cover system, mm-hmm. but his hitbox was normal. So like he's Art Goldfinger, like all tubby and shit, like poking out from behind the cover. But you can't actually shoot his fat because it's not a hitbox. <laughs> <laughs> so like you know where he is, and like you're just like you're cowering behind there, and there's like bullets flying through you, and you're like I'm untouchable. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I love, and this is like Pierce Brosnan's got obviously the best games. Because one, he was like really during the video game era, but like the everything or nothing, I've said it before. That's one of my favorite James Bond games of all time. Third person that came out in that awkward time where he was still technically James Bond, but not really James yeah, Bond. Yeah, but like totally original story, original theme. They got like Willem Dafoe and like actually like act, you know like big time actors to do the voices. Yeah, that Inclu- was a really cool game. Yeah, Brosnan does his own voice. Uh, Judy Dench comes back. John Cleese comes back. Mm-hmm. Um, Heidi Klum and um, Shannon Elizabeth. Shannon are, Elizabeth, yeah. yeah. John Renault is there mm. for some reason. Uh, it's great. I mean, there's a lot of vehicle levels. There's a lot, you know, obviously third person. Like, there's like, all different locations and stuff. It's like it's a re- it's you know kind of like joking like the fifth James the fifth um, Brosnan film because yeah. like it's it basically it does everything except it just isn't a live action movie. 
Um, but the the end is fucking really hard and ridiculous. The one where you're yeah in like Moscow. But like, um, it's great. It's a really good game. So yeah. <laughs> um, what is? Do you think that Tomorrow Never Dies just sucks because there's like no. Like, there's just nothing that, like, seals the deal for you? I don't think it sucks. I mean, I, I like, I just don't think that, like, like, there are a lot of, there are a lot of, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's a decent number of Bond films that I would, like, gladly watch this, like, over. over. You know, I'm like, you you put between, like, this and, like, in Diamonds Are Forever or whatever, and it's, like, it's an easy choice. It's not like I'm, like, you know, weighing the... Uh, like the scales and like really kind of having to calculate out okay well like it, no this is a perfectly watchable film but yeah, it's middle of the road say what middle of the road it's middle of the road yeah it's, it's just like it's got nothing there, there's nothing that you can really firmly say this movie sucks because X but on the flip side there's nothing that you can point to and be like that was fucking awesome mm, you know mm. like it's just there you know it's like it's like um there was a standardized test for making films and this was what was turned in as a like an answer yeah almost so it's it's like made to order it, no, it's not even made to order it's just like this is like plato in the cave is like what is a film and then this pops out <laughs> and then plato is just like Good enough. Nonplussed, like sure, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I can. It's a movie. I can watch it. Right. Well, shit. I mean, there's. It's just. Oh, sh- I'm sorry. I'm looking it up. Honestly, I think it's probably one of the more quotable James Bond movies. Um, Certainly during the Bro- during the Brosnan era. Also, why does Jack Wade show up? No, oh, because he's the fan favorite. Because <laughs> he was so popular. In the- it's like the J- hey, Jimbo. Oh, hey, oh. Hey, yo. It's not quite the J.W. Pepper effect, but like I feel like the same thought process is there. Absolutely. Uh, the he's ju- like he's less, you know, he's less of a caricature. I feel like than J.W. Pepper, but he's still like, it's like, oh, Americans. <laughs> so, the director. Roger Spottiswood. Yes, thank you, Sam. Because I was like, I don't know how to pronounce this. He was an editor for Straw Dogs, Pat Garrett, Billy the Kid, The Gambler, Hard Times. He. Was a writer on Forty Eight Hours. Directed Air America, right? Uh, and, yes, and directed The Sixth Day. He did right after this. Oh yeah, right after this. Um, I'm looking to see what his most recent is called, The Beach House. And Minka Kelly. It's one of those flicks on Cinemax. Chad Michael Murray. But uh, no, I mean he goes back, you know. Like I said, editing uh, Straw Dogs, you know, and Pat Barrett, Pat Garrett, and Believe the Kids, some Sam Peckinpah action. Mm. Uh, it's kind of cool. Um, you don't get any of that here. No, no, I mean, no, 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 you don't. Um, God, imagine if Sam Peckinpah did a James Bond movie. You'd actually see the violence and sex uh, in full display. Yeah. Which is apparently what Brosnan, like, he's like, I think we kind of skimped out on the sex scenes. Like, I think he said that, like, in his exit, like, I forget who interviewed him post-Bond. Like, it was in that, the the wild years before he did, like, The Matador. Oh, God, it's the best. Yeah. I love that film. It's my, it's favorite, amazing. It's my favorite Pierce Brosnan movie. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. Smell you, like, I shouldn't have to tell you. <laughs> look, here's here's what you should do when you're listening to this podcast. Like, put the podcast on pause. Go to fucking Amazon. Order the Matador, like on disc, and also the also like order it on disc, but then also the like Amazon video because you're gonna watch it while it's coming to you. Watch the movie, yeah. and it's... then once it's over, wait for the disc to come. Watch it on disc again, you know, and then unpause and continue the podcast. Yes, I mean it's um now that you've watched the film, um it's <laughs> that Twice. that. That trailer, yeah, that trailer was playing nonstop when I was work, started working at Blockbuster. It came out, I think, the day I started working at Blockbuster, like, to rent, um, along with um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. So those two trailers were playing, like, nonstop. And I remember, uh, I was like, I, yeah, I like Pierce Brosnan. Um, you know, I'll check it out, because the trailer's playing nonstop, and it's a funny trailer. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is amazing. So it's Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Do the exact same thing with that one. Um, watch it twice. 
but uh yeah uh what was uh, uh the matter was what 2006 i guess that's when i was, yep. was working on and i remember they got the killers i think pretty cheap because they hadn't like blown up huge because the end of that movie has all these things that i've done yeah um yeah it's a fucking great movie like that was basically like brosnan's answer to the producers of bond because it comes out the same year as casino royale right and it's and it's kind of a great first movie i don't know if it's like the was it the first I, movie he did post bond or no like, i think no, like I think he did mars attacks didn't he no that was that was 90s no, 97 oh yeah. you're right you're right you're right you're right uh so it came out the same year as this um <laughs> but the uh <laughs> um he did like Beyond uh, Sunset or After Sunset oh, okay. with. Uh, he did some shit that was like throwaway stuff, like. Yeah. But, no, the Matadors is fucking awesome. Um, watch it again. Mm. Seraphim Falls. Yeah, the third time. Seraphim Falls. Oh shit, we watched that, didn't we? Where all he does is fall. Yeah, I mean that was like that's why it's called Seraphim. Is his name Seraphim? <laughs> because he falls the entire movie off cliffs, out of trees. Yeah. yeah. He falls a lot in that movie. Yeah. Tumble. Is it Liam Neeson is the other? Liam Neeson's the guy that's hunting him. That's how he escapes. He falls. Yeah. What, what was the volcano movie? Uh, he's in Dante's Peak, which also that, is like yes. right around this. Here's a question. Do you prefer Dante's Peak or do you prefer Volcano? I never saw Volcano. Volcano. It's the one with Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, I never Dante's, saw Peak. Dante's Peak. I don't know if I've ever seen Volcano either. Oh. They stop uh, the lava flow by dropping a Cedar Sinai uh, hospital in front of it and dumping water from helicopters on top of the lava. Okay, it's well, like, it's like isn't that like right in the middle of like the disaster movie? Like, oh, it was back. Oh, yeah, you would get that. Everything's everything's exploding or freezing or having asteroids flying at it. Like, right? Yeah, yeah, was, pretty much. Yeah, because that was like that presaged um, that presaged the Deep Impact Armageddon matchup, but it came right after Twister. Ah. Which Chris will tell you, one of the first major Hollywood films released on DVD. I th- I say it a million times. I say all different kinds of movies, but I think that's the last thing I ever bought. Was Twister from Blockbuster? Was Twister like when it was like closing up? I was like, I'll take a Twister. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, oh, well, like that's like uh it's one of the first uh, major DVDs. Uh, uh, it's the you know, as this place fucking crumbles into ex- you know non-existence. I guess there's one left. Um, and like middle of Alaska or some bullshit. Yeah. But. Or maybe his eyes wide shut. I don't remember. Please be kind. Rewind. That's right. Yeah. Uh, what was the last movie I picked up? That rewind machine ever, was the fucking real deal, the by the way. Did you ever see the fucking labels that somebody made to put on DVDs that um, it's like like to fit over, like, you know, the, the spindle thing in the middle where there's like the clear plastic inside the label? Mm-hmm. And they made a, somebody made like a yellow sticker with the Blockbuster logo on it that you could put on there that said, be kind, rewind. Hmm. Oh. And then, like, you, you would put them on the DVD and turn them back in, and then, like, the old person who got the movie next would call the blockbuster and be very confused. <laughs> How do you rewind this? So you just put it on your finger and spin it. <laughs> yeah. Is that all it takes? Yeah, that's yeah, all it takes, that's, sir. That's it. Yeah, I mean, fucking Pierce Brosnan. Fucking Pierce Brosnan. Is he in the new Mamma Mia? He is. Which apparently is like the dark night of Mamma Mia. Yeah, people were fucking loving the <laughs> shit out of it, dude. I was like, oh, I've seen the first one. Maybe I should see the second one. I haven't seen the first. Can I watch Mamma Mia? Here we go again without having gone the first time. I haven't seen it yet. I saw the first one. But you know how many times I listened to Mamma Mia this past wedding weekend? A lot. Yes. Why? Too many. Too I, many. Yeah. <laughs> Any number is too many. <laughs> I just hope there's a point in the movie where like... Have you shit, s- his shit hits the fan. Yeah. And Pierce Brosnan turns to the camera and he goes, here we go again. <laughs> have you, it, have you, you, you've seen how that dude sings? Pierce Brosnan? Yeah. Terribly, yeah. Yeah. It's like every dad ever. Um, But he try, he's trying to be like romantic and sexy at the same time. Yeah. Because he's wooing Meryl Streep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About a here. here I go again. So um, did they just sing the same soundtrack like again? If they just sang, um, Mama, if, if they just sang "Take a Chance" for two hours, I'd be fine because that song fucking rules, dude. You might be a big take, it, but take a chance, take a chance, take, oh, a, no. take a chance, take a chance, take a chance. Mamma Mia, like the title track, the one I listened to like fourteen times over the weekend. Yeah, <laughs> that song fucking. Times too many. <laughs> yeah. That song fucking rips. Mamma Mia rips, but. 
take a are chance you on, on drugs right now. <laughs> Take like, a well, chance on we're me. We're sitting here talking, not quite sharing breath because we're across, like we're like several states away. But, yeah. Like, dude, the 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 breakdown and take a chance on me when it all it all comes kicking in and it's just the fucking heaviest shit. Um, when it's uh, how's it go? Who the fuck take a chance, are you? Take a chance. <laughs> and he goes, and we're all alone. It's it's a, it's that's the best part. Um. So I don't know. I mean, they have a million. They have like a billion million songs. I heard supposedly like back in the day they turned down a billion dollars to reunite. I I've heard that. I've heard that too. I've heard that too. Good. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, yeah. People are like, dude, Mamma Mia, here I go again is the real fucking deal. I wonder if it's like the padding. Dominic team. Cooper's in it. Of oh, Preacher fame. Yeah. He's in the first one. Garrett, have you ever read Preacher? I have not. Do it. Oh. Dude, it's like it's the greatest. Jake and I were talking earlier. Like, Preacher is probably the greatest book, like over that Vertigo ever put out. Over Sandman, over Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, over Hellblazer. Preacher is like over Transmet. Oh shit! I forgot about Transmetropolitan. I mean, I've never read Transmetropolitan. There's some. There's some. <laughs> but like, shit. holy hell! But uh, I mean, how did Warren Ellis predict the future? Warren Ellis is not in a good way. Um, no, Preacher's like... More than the Bond producers. Yeah. Like 2001, he's like, I see you coming. <laughs> you orange motherfucker. Mm. Yeah. Spider. I've, every con I go to, I see a Spider Jerusalem. Maybe not every con, but all the big ones, I see a Spider Jerusalem. I'm like, hey, Spider Jerusalem. And he always flicks me off. And I'm always like, that's exactly what Spider <laughs> Jerusalem would do. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um. So, yeah, Cheryl Crow on the, on the theme to this. Great. You know, I actually like the prologue too. Backseat driver. Backseat driver. When he like ejects the the terrorist pilot forgotten. into the not terror into the other terrorist pilot. I've completely forgot every. Wait, wait, I'm. Why am I blanking on this? So, there's an arms deal. Oh yeah. Okay. In like gotcha. Siberia. Yeah. 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 And gotcha. they, pl- they play the opening fanfare to From Russia with Love like three times. The da 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 You can see Donald Trump there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, one day this will definitely make sense, okay? Um. But yeah, no, that's. I like the prologue. Like, he's like, the dude asks for a light and he. Beats the shit out of him. And he's just like nasty habit. Yeah, it's like you know you did that for like a long time. Yeah, like every bond before you smoked cigarettes. Yeah, you smoke a cigar and die another day. <laughs> 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 um, but it's a nice line. Did Roger smoke cigarettes. Roger Moore smoked cigarettes, and in um, the first two, uh, his first two Bond films, and uh, Live and Let Die. Uh, he smoked the uh, cigars in. Uh... In the first two, he smoked cigars. Yeah. yeah, as a way to be like, look, he's not... Not Sean Connery. Yeah. Um, also, or Pierce... That other guy who sucks. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other fella. Um, threw me off. Yeah, I preferred menthol. <laughs> <laughs> this is also the first movie with... Uh, Bob movie with Colin Salmon. Who? Robinson. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Who, uh, he's Carman in Master of None. I've, I've only seen half the first episode. Oh. Master of None's actually, like, legitimately one of my favorite shows on Netflix. And I'm not the biggest Aziz Ansari guy. Certainly not now, but, like, <laughs> even, even, like, before all that, I was like, this dude is maybe a little grating, but... It's very well written, and a lot of the jokes outside of Aziz's are like actually like <laughs> funny as hell. <laughs> I ne- just like to point out, like yeah. right now, that like average runtime for this podcast is like just shy of an hour, sometimes over. We're like thirty-five minutes in, and we're struggling for shit to talk about. My prediction has come true. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you know, I was just thinking about this as we've been, as we've been getting off on tangent after tangent. Um, <laughs> It's, it's not like that the we're movie, off on tangents. It's like we're struggling for fucking tangents. The movie, the movie was best summed up in probably minute six. 
when Sam said, it's not as bad as I remember it being, but I don't enjoy it as much as I want to when I started. Yeah. It's... And I think that's like the perfect kind of like summary of the movie. You know, um, there's just, it's, there's nothing cool about it. You know, I mean, even like, and it's, it's amazing because you could literally do just a couple things differently and the movie stands out a little bit more. Like um, Price is a fantastic actor who just kind of falls flat. If you get somebody who's a little bit more diabolical, I think, and kind of less fantastic in the role, um, you know, he stands out and he's a much more formidable villain. If you had set pieces that visually were much more appealing than what they ended up doing, um, you know, there, there's more visual things that'll jump out at you, more moments that, that you know, you'll, that, that'll be remembered. Um, you know, if Terry Hatcher is more than just a simple plot device to get him from point A to point B, it, I, I think it's a stronger movie. Um, it's just, it's a movie that, it's a fine movie that probably should have been, when you look back on it now, and given where we are and what people think of the media today and whatnot, it's a fine movie that probably should have been a much, much, much more successful movie. Well, and you know, you're 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 talking about all that, but the the fact, you know, one of the things that kind of sucks about that is Terry Hatcher being a plot device. She's not even a good plot device. She's she dies to make the the yeah. mission arguably more personal for James Bond, but he after he leaves Berlin, he doesn't seem to give a shit. You know, <laughs> he's just like, oh well, yeah. now I'm still going to stop you. And now I'm going, but now I'm going to throw you in front of your shark torpedo and enjoy it. Like there is like that. Because you've got to give the people what they want. <laughs> Such a ridiculous. Remember when like the big German man, Mr. Stamper, like. Mr. Stamper. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like a fucking, like they're all cartoon characters in this movie. Everybody's a fucking cartoon character. Like, he said no, Bond is just going around murdering everybody <laughs> with ease. Yeah. No recoil for me. Cartoon. Wait, what was that, Garrett? I said that's a kind of cartoon. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Yeah, nobody's, like, fully realized. Like, it's like Bond murdering Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking them, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fuck this Muppet and I'm going to shoot this Muppet. <laughs> Twist this like, one. At, at the end of the day, this is, like, this is a film that you're not going to regret watching. Like you're not gonna no, you're not gonna finish the film and be like, holy shit, yeah. why did I waste this time? Yeah. Um, but like, also, it's not a film that I can like, in good conscience, like really affirmatively recommend. Yeah. If you if like you yes. stumble into a into a room with a TV and a DVD player and a copy of this, then like, well, nature can take its course, I guess. But like, you shouldn't. I don't. I don't know. That, I can necessarily suggest that you take steps to put yourself in that situation. Yeah. I agree. Like, I mean, it's my favorite James Bond movie, so (laughs) I know, I know where you are going to basically like fucking get double teamed by Garrett and rich. It's in like four. episodes. Oh yeah. I look forward to it. Cause I love that movie. Me too. I love that movie. I fucking hate that movie. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch the South Park, um, like the little things Matt and Trey would do before? I don't know if they did it on every season. Probably not. But like they would do these little like intros before the, sh- the, sh- the every they did show. It for, like the first three seasons. Yeah. Of DVD. And every single episode they refer to as their favorite episode. <laughs> they go, this is our favorite episode because I think they'd get that question asked <laughs> all the time. It's fucking hilarious. Just like this is, I mean, I mean, it, as I'm like talking through it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is, though, that like of all the people, though, but of all the people that I've ever, you know, talked bond with, there's never anyone that comes out and says they love this movie. There's people that say that they hate it or whatever, but like, there's like, there's you know how there's like a bond for everyone. Mm-hmm. This might be one of those movies where it, there's not a this bond movie is not for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never met anybody out there where this is their favorite Bond film. God, I would love to meet that person. They're just like, 
Just yeah, to, like, what... sit them down and give them, like, a two-hour lecture on why they're fucking wrong. <laughs> well, it's like, <laughs> no, I want to hear them, like, kid, like tell me why it's their favorite. They're like, I like BMWs. I like fast typing, Cheryl Crow. Uh, and stealth boats. Stealth boats, news, <laughs> German men, <laughs> and Terry Hatcher. Like, well, I got the fucking movie for you, man. <laughs> popcorn ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love slamming my dick in drawers. While watching James Bond movies. No, that that's for later in the series. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's your it's your yeah. That's where you that's and Garrett great. are basically gonna go head to head. I can't. I'm wait. just saying, I brought the good shit on Moonraker. I have high expectations for you, Jake. I'm gonna do my best. Um, I mean, what I might do is just cower in fear and just agree <laughs> with everything you say. I don't know. <laughs> You're like, this movie fucking sucks. I'm like, I know, it's shaky. It's a shaky movie. It's short and shaky. Um, <laughs> There's an opera sequence there that's pretentious as shit. I know, it's quiet. Um, <laughs> then why is he looking at me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> talking about another dweeb villain. Yeah. Who's the I, bigger dweeb villain? Um, I, I think this villain. Green. No, I think... Uh, I, I could never see... Jonathan Price with like an axe, you know, yeah, and then axing himself in the fucking between his toes, like yeah. a douche. Ah! Um, yeah. Do, does Bond need the more like physically? I was thinking about that the other day. I want there to be like a fucking like comic book villain or like action movie villain that isn't because I've been watching. I you know I'm writing something for CBR that'll have been published by the time this thing airs. Uh, you know, I'm revisiting all the missions. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I write for CBR. I do. I do. I'm a big deal. <laughs> the argument has been made. The My um. Name's Sam Stone. <laughs> I get flown to conferences. I do. I do. Um, uh, but the um. My name's Garrett, and I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> <laughs> Got to write for CBR. Um, uh, I've been revisiting all the uh, Mission Impossible movies. And I kind of want there to be like a bad guy in a James Bond movie or a Mission Impossible movie that's just so weak that they just get wailed on by the hero for like mercilessly. I guess the closest it gets is what like Danny DeVito in Batman Returns. That's the most one sided (laughs) fucking thing I've ever seen since. Oh boy. Um, No, that's about it. I mean, like (laughs) Penguin's go to move is jumping on his back. And Batman just throws him off and just beats the fuck out of him. Yeah. I mean, what's another one-sided fight? I mean, uh, I'm trying to think for, like, recent memory. To be Bane fair. What's that? Bane versus Batman. I mean, Bane does beat the shit out of him, but, like, at least I think Batman hits him. You know, yeah. Ro- uh, Penguin, just, his, his element of surprise is blown as he jumps on his back yeah. like ah. a toddler. <laughs> to be fair, Jack Nicholson's Joker... Remember how one-sided that fight against Batman is? That is, that is definitely one-sided. But to be also sure. fair, if you're Danny DeVito, how the fuck else are you going to fight somebody? He bites one dude's nose off. Yeah. And the jo- Joker does fuck up Batman and Vicky Vale. Well, he just grabs them. And right? he, like... I mean, you know, if, if Batman didn't have his shit, they would have died. Yeah. But, yeah, he does, like, punch him in the six-pack and breaks his hands. <laughs> yeah. Ooh! <laughs> And you then would, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses for some reason. Would like, you hit a guy with glasses? <laughs> yeah, for some reason, like when I was a little kid, I was like, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't do that. But then, like, one time I watched it, it just dawned on me that that was the s- most absurd, funniest shit in that movie. That like he's he's like packing up his shit. He's like, all right, we're gonna have a little fucking fight on the top of this tower here, and he's just like, I got my fake teeth, I got my fucking squirty flower with the acid. And I got my glasses in case he beats the fuck out of me. I can make him feel bad. Um, like, you know, I don't know. That that scene is just very funny to me. And the fact that Batman doesn't even, like, basically ba- doesn't even wait for him to finish it. Yeah. Your glasses, would you? Boom. <laughs> and the uh, this noise he makes when he, like, head rams him through, like, wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny because, like, 
it's like the exact it's like earlier on in that fight scene the big one of joker's big goons like beats the fuck out of batman and, and is punching him in like the the, the six california pack. raisin, yeah. raisin man. the six-pack armor and it's just like no problem for him. He's just beating the shit out of him. You're like, oh shit! And then Joker goes up, and you're thinking like, oh, it's the Joker, <laughs> and it just breaks all of his hands on it. Ooh, <laughs> he's like spitting blood. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that's that's so awesome. Also, like, I mean, when he gets like punched, like, and the the sound effect when he gets punched in the mouth. Doesn't Jonathan Price land a hit on Pierce Brosnan, like from behind? I don't remember. It n- doesn't phase him. Yeah. <laughs> But I remember, like, Batman punches him, like, and, like, it's not like the Indiana Jones, like, or, like, even the Batman, boom! It's like the little, like, like he's just hitting lip. Yeah. Because then he goes, duh, 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 and, like, falls through the thing and, like, spits out his, like, fake teeth where it's, like, are we supposed to believe that, or that's just, like, he had him in his pocket and he's, like, oh, I'm just getting my ass kicked. He's, like, all right, let's bring on the funny and, like, comes out and he's, like, Pleh! and then they had a little chattering teeth. I don't know. Can you do any Tomorrow Never Dies lines as Jack Nicholson? <laughs> um, hang on. <laughs> Let's stay under the cover. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me look up IMDb real quick. Yeah. I'll try to find something. Give the people what they want. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, that's that, that's who they probably should have cast. Oh. Jack Nicholson? Oh, he'd be a great Bond villain. He would, he would, he'd be like Telly Savalas in my favorite James Bond movie, On Your Majesty's Secret Service. Let's see. Well, that's the <laughs> podcast, guys. Uh, <laughs> Kojak, not lo- or Lojack, not Kojak. I don't even know where that's from. <laughs> Kojak. Well, no, there was a. Um... No, there's a throwaway line in some fucking show that, like, I watched once, and like they're trying to track down a car, and like the the running gag through the entire episode is people ask for a Lojack, and the comic relief character goes. Who loves you, baby? And like the other characters, like Lojack, not Kojak. And it happens like five times. And I like this happened. I swear to God, I didn't hallucinate it while drunk, but I cannot fucking find it for the life of me. So, if one of you twelve listeners out there can find twelve, the same thing. <laughs> moving on up, boys. Yeah, we're at the thirteen now. Okay. Yeah. Um. No, but seriously, like, where the fuck is that from? Uh, I, the world may never know. I, I need to know. Someone uh, needs to find it and tell me so I can, like, die happy. Um, one of the quotes on IMDb is James Bond. For all Bo- you listeners out there, especially the folks in Denmark, if you can find that and let Garrett know, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on IMDb, it says, James Bond, parentheses, after throwing a bad guy into a printing press, they'll print anything these days. Or Mr. Stamper. I owe you an unpleasant death, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Let's see. What was that one IMDb quote? Was it from Daredevil? When it was just like, the quote was just Kingpin going, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. My favorite Hang was, on. uh, my favorite was, uh, um, <laughs> in the, uh, did anybody ever see Free State of Jones with Matthew McConaughey? No, yeah. that's the that trailer a lot, though. Right? There was like, th- yeah, there was like a summer where they would attach that trailer to like fucking everything. Free State of Jones. <laughs> yeah, we're a Free State of Jones. <laughs> nah, he died with honor. Nah, he, he just, just did. died. Yeah, he just died. <laughs> but uh, there's one of the IMDb quotes was just ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> no, here, here it is from uh, Daredevil. Uh, and I remember it was like the headline, like the, like the first quote the that would pop up. quote. Wilson Fisk. You took everything from me. I'm going to kill you. And then Matt Murdock says, take your shot. And then it says, Wilson Fisk. And he goes, ah, four H's and one exclamation point. <laughs> That's just so dumb. Look, look up Free State of Jones. Okay, look. hang on. Do Free State of Jones here. This is the last tangent, I swear to God. Then we'll put this motherfucker to bed and watch a worse movie next time. <laughs> But is the world not enough worse? Than, you know what's on sale this week on Vudu? Mm. Dark Tower. Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm curious. Do I spend, I'm not going to buy it. Do I spend $10 and no, buy Dark Tower? No, just rent it because you're never going to watch it again. You'll spend less you money. probably rent it for the same price. Exactly. So if I'm going to rent it for the same price, why don't I just own the Dark you're Tower? You're going to rent it for $9? Then, then you can feel that shame for the 
huh. the rest of your life. Newton Knight. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Uh, Wait, what, what's the character's name? Newton Knight. Ho, ho, ho. And above that is, take my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I have to watch this movie. I have to watch both movies, really. Yeah. And the Matador. And the, the Matador. Well, I've oh, seen the Matador is actually legitimately. Matador, like, so like, pause, pause the podcast again. Watch the Matador one more time. Yeah, yeah. and then and kiss, order. Kiss, bang, bang. Yeah, kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Oh my god! If we're talking like really good, fuck. I'm so excited now. Maybe not so excited, but I'm actually looking forward to Shane Black's Predator. I mean, uh, yep. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna see it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be the cinematic event of the year. Over Halloween. I think it. I, I, I don't know. I mean, they're two completely different. <laughs> I mean, I've liked the Predator character longer than I've liked Michael Myers, but... What if you know. my headcanon is the Halloween of Predator takes place in the same... Well, Halloween. what would happen... Here's what would happen, right? Um, Haddonfield, and Michael Myers killed everybody in Haddonf- Haddonfield, and he's like, all right, good. And he's just, like, walking, and it's a tracking shot, and a Predator ship comes, and the Predator walks out and just kills Michael Myers in, like, five seconds, because that's what would happen. He'd be like, just blows his head off. And then he, that'd be it. Because he's like, you we have a fucking knife, you mechanic man. And just punches him across the world. Yeah. Anyway. While invisible. Yes. Yes. So, you guys got anything, last thoughts on Tomorrow Never Dies? That's it. Like the theme song a lot. <laughs> Either of you gents. Nothing. You shouldn't feel bad about watching it, but you shouldn't feel good about it either. <laughs> And on that note, if you're out there and it's your favorite Bond movie, let us know. We'd yeah. love to hear why. Please, please. That's our that's our challenge. That's our we we might have a prize for you. Um I'm not sure you'll want the prize, but we might have it. Yeah. We have a lot I have a lot of random shit in my apartment. Um the prize is a copy of a better movie. Yeah. I I'll send you a copy of Taffin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of Pierce Brosnan performances. Um Every time I bring that up, nobody ever wants to watch it. But the uh, for good reason. Well, the... somebody might now. <laughs> yeah. So this has been another installment from Geek Out with Love. I'm Sam. I'm Jake. I'm Rich. I'm Garrett. Goodbye, Goodbye James, James Bond. Bond. This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual catching up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening.